All right, perfect. <clears throat> so I wanted to talk a bit about uh, modern uh, software development uh, productivity metrics, uh, which is a uh, research that we have uh, initiated uh, together with Tetra Pak in the uh, last sprint. So, um, yeah, software development productivity, it's uh, its basically Emperor's new clothes. I mean, everybody has been talking about productivity a long time ago. So what's new in 2021? And, and we'll talk a bit about that uh, today. Productivity measures in software development, uh, which people are really using and uh, that at least I have seen in many contexts uh, doing really, really good job in increasing the productivity, which are either process based or product based or, or customer business based. And I'll show you some experiences from from uh, different companies and summarize in the end. So. Productivity metrics. I mean, why are we talking about productivity in 2021? So one of the reasons why this concept pops up again is because of the pandemic. I know everybody is not uh, for the pandemic and we hate set, sitting at home and doing things online. But what has changed is that many companies have realized that this online working or remote working or staying at home and or working from different places may not be that bad, but very few companies, if, if any, over, over the time actually measure their productivity. So are we more productive uh, compared to what we were before the pandemic? That's the big question for many, many businesses. Um, then another aspect is the process transformation. I mean, the di digitalization today is one of the big things that is disrupting almost every company. We, we talked about that, uh, both Ericsson uh, CTO talked about uh, digitalization, what it means for their business, but also in the presentations with Volvo and, uh, and other companies, it, it is happening. So the question is, you know, are we being more productive when we are digital or not? And, and if we are more productive, what does it really mean? So people are changing processes from manual to, to digital, uh, doing less things, more things, and so on. But the question is, well, are, we, are we more productive? Do we get more if we are working in this way or another way? So process transformations are more and more common. Um, <clears throat> and then digitalization and service orientation. Uh, several companies are, are going away from the model of selling products to selling services. And this service orientation means that we suddenly have to be competitive as an industry in a completely different way. What we are doing with service orientation is not only the quality of the product that's delivered to market, but also the quality of the service over time. So if I'm buying a phone or if I'm buying a, a car today, I expect it to grow and be better over time and do certain things with that product. So the quality over time is also very, very important. And that means that productivity metrics that are only based on the product are no longer good enough because they, they will only get us to selling the product, not selling the service, not, not keeping the surprise, uh, their subscriptions and keeping the customers uh, with us. So that's why we're talking about productivity in 2021, uh, I would say again, uh, but this is a very, very interesting again. So in general, what, where does it all come from? I mean, we have this old fashioned view on productivity in many ways, that it's an output uh, volume over labor. So the more I do with the less resources, the more productive I am. And that's of course, great and fantastic way of doing it. It comes from manufacturing. So if you go to a factory floor at company, uh, at company producing something, you know, it's easy to measure how many employees we have, how many things we actually produce. But uh, that's not software development. In software development, I mean, we talk features, uh, we talk about volume of code uh, as output, but then we get into very, very quickly into interesting questions. So if I produce more code than someone else, and now am I being more productive? Uh, and if I produce two features, whereas my colleague produces one, am I more productive? Or maybe the value of the feature is more important than the actual feature or the volume of the code. So this gets very interesting, even if you look at the output. And then how about the input then? What does it mean, the labor, input labor? So if I work eight hours, does that mean, and produce one feature, does that mean that it, I'm more productive than someone who was working 
four hours and then produced one feature. Well, how about if I was wasting four hours on, I don't know, uh, for the lack of better example, Teams meetings and just produced the, the code in four hours? Uh, so the engineering hours became very popular once in a time, and they are even popular today, but they are very, very fluffy in definitions. And then, of course, many of you have heard the uh, story points, which is, um, yeah, it's a fantastic uh, concept, but it's so fundamentally wrong that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually afraid of mentioning them at all. And then many companies were talking about, <clears throat> are talking about number of designers or software engineers or. But, but, you know, if I have two employees that are working for me and produce one feature, you know, are they more productive in my, if I have three employees? Um, yeah, I don't know. It depends on who they, what they work. But it's a very dangerous way of working, way of thinking, because then you get into places where you reduce the workforce instead of increasing workforce and increasing output. So if I look at the productivity landscape today in, in software development, uh, I have three areas and I will not go through all of them uh, uh, today. I will just give a number of examples. But the area of process related measures of productivity, and that's maybe the most um, the most common way of thinking about productivity today or, or before, um, which is, for example, how much uh, how many requirements do we implement per week? or per hour or per developer? How many story points do we cover per sprint? Um, all kinds of things. Very good, but they are very often very, very loosely related to the actual output. The fact that we say we implemented 20 requirements depends equally much on how we write the requirements as on actually what we implemented. So those process-related measures, they are very easily I would say to manipulate in many contexts. So they're not really great. Then in the last few years, a lot has been done and a lot has been, discussions have, go, have been going on on the product related metrics. So product related productivity, like speed, how much, how many, how many uh, features do we deliver? How many uh, reviews uh, we do over time? Uh, how much uh, we do output, queues, uh, backlog? new features, and all kinds of things. Very good again, but then <clears throat> they are very much related to the product-oriented ways of working, which is today, I would, I would say, the old-fashioned way of working. I mean, nobody's really selling products today. People are selling services around the products. So if we talk only about product-related productivity, uh, they will get us somewhere, but will not get us all the way. That's why the, the more modern way of looking at productivity is about the business related. So if we're talking about services over time, what is more interesting to look at is things like, for example, customer churning. How many customers do we lose over time? Because that's the most important. That could be an indicator of a brand losing value over time. So instead of focusing whether we do more reviews or implement more requirements, we should be asking ourselves the question, how do we keep more customers over time? Where do we look for those uh, for, for those customers? So not really productivity per se, but maybe the proxy of productivity that exactly that is exactly what our industry needs today. The same for for uh, for retention, for instance. But also, I'm I'm very much uh, in love into metrics that are related to the company's business goal. So I have this proxy that I, I show how fast is the search which is the only metric that Google actually uses for tracing everything at Google, the productivity, productivity, whatever they, uh, they do, productivity, quality, and so on. And I think those are the metrics that more companies should adopt. Think about the core of their business. What do we do? How do we measure whether what we do is getting better over time rather than if we produce that in a cheaper way? Uh, the companies that have been focusing on producing things cheaper and not on innovation, they don't exist today. Uh, for example, Kodak company, they were very much focused on the cost cutting, not on innovation. Kodak doesn't exist today. Um, digital Instruments, uh, DEC, Digital Equipment Corporation, once upon a time, one of the biggest computer suppliers, 
I would say 99.99% of my students don't really know what the deck is today, uh, simply because they focus on cost cutting. Cost cutting. Uh, and examples like that exist all over the place. So let me give a few examples of, of a process oriented of process oriented metrics. So this is a burn down, burn up uh, chart. The focus of this is not on measuring in measuring the actual productivity. The focus is on measuring the output. So here the output is activities. What do we actually do? And they could be measured in story points. Here I, I put story point, but they actually measured in some other secret um, secret metric. And the input labor is number of persons. Uh, and the, the goal of this dashboard is to monitor how much work is actually being done. So this chart that is uh, red in the top left hand uh, in the bottom left hand corner that actually shows the disruption of work and that is something that is really really important for the team to get visualized so the burn down and burn up new things that are coming in are really important to show to communicate whether the work is actually being done and that is in my opinion more important whether showing that we are doing the work very quickly because here the team doesn't care if they get an extra resource. As long as they manage to produce what they are supposed to produce, they are happy. Then we have uh, another example, speed lead time. And this metric is taken from one of the software center companies, which says 23 days, uh, which is the average time required or duration of a review. Now, why do I think this metric is a good metric? Because it's so simple. It tells us how much time do I need to wait for my code to be reviewed, regardless if it's a lot of code or little code? Because as a designer, you don't really care whether somebody is reviewing a lot of code or a small. You want the feedback as soon as possible. And then this metric helps you to increase your productivity by reducing the duration. I mean, you can be faster in producing the code. And then if your strategy to be faster is to produce smaller chunks of code, but do them more often, that's fine by me, and that's fine by the company as well, as long as you produce value to the customers. Uh, the bottom chart is something that's called a feature lead time. It's also from a company in Software Center. And this one is a very simple measurement and visualization of how much time uh, each feature, uh, so every row is a feature, each feature spends in a specific time, F0, F1, 2, 3, and so on. They are different statuses of that feature. And then this visualization tells us also about the lead time and duration. And here, the, the feature are defined in such a way so that they can be visible and bought by the, by the customer. So if you go and buy the product from this company, I mean, there is a tick box for every row of this, uh, of this, um, of this chart. And what is important here is that this lead time translates very much to the revenue of the company. The more you wait with the development of a feature, the more the or the less time the customer has to tick on it to buy it. So here, you, what you want to be is you want to have a feature that the customer can buy delivered as fast as possible. Well, it's not again productivity, but it will lead to productivity because what measure gets done, what me what gets measured gets done. If we look at the product-oriented example. Uh, from Ericsson, uh, release readiness. Uh, this is about producing the product. How much time do we actually need to deliver the product? There is a formula behind it. The metric is very simple. Again, how much time, duration. Now, one could say that the strategy of the company would be to deliver smaller products over time, but uh, maybe so be it, as long as the customers can take the box and buy the product, buy the feature, that leads to revenue, that leads to happier customers, that leads to more money for the company, better quality of the product, more feedback, faster. So again, not exactly per se output versus labor productivity measurement, but a good measurement that will lead to increased productivity in the company over time. Uh, another <clears throat> very simple, um, a very simple way of visualizing productivity is this chart, which we used internally at uh, Ericsson for measuring the how often a specific measurement system is actually being accessed. accessed. 
And for this, we measure that because we wanted to understand whether the customers, the stakeholders of the measurement system are essentially really interested in that. So the measurement systems that are uh, on the lines, for example, number 60 and 61, where they access quite uh, a lot, the red uh, horizontal lines, they are very valuable. I mean, the customers are looking at them all the time, the stakeholders. But if you take one of the one of the roles at the top, for example, measurement system 25, that was accessed just a few times in the beginning and almost zero in the end, that's a productivity sink. If we have to maintain that measurement system, we cannot maintain something that has value. So we are wasting our time. Again, not productivity per se, but allows us to focus on what really, really matters and allows us to cut what is not important, what is not really needed by the customers. Again, increase productivity. So here, without decreasing the, the output, we're decreasing the, the labor that we put because we actually can focus on something really cool. And you can use that to measure feature uh, access, all kinds of things uh, for your product very, very easily. Um, now, for the customer oriented, the reason why I'm talking about customers is, again, because we live in a service oriented world. We want to know more and more about our customers. We want to have more customers, sell more features. We want more people to buy something from us all the time. Uh, we want them to use our ecosystem. We want to build an ecosystem. <clears throat> so those few metrics that are for important, and here I have two, I have two on the next slide. So customer acquisition, how many new customers do we acquire over time? But even more important, customer growth rate. So how much revenue do we get from existing customers? If I buy a product from Apple today, but then tomorrow I buy Android and more features from Android, I'm a more of an Android customer than an Apple customer. So the companies that are selling something to me, they would, sell more, they would like to sell more and more for me simply because for the first they are getting me hooked into their, their uh, ecosystem. And for the second is because I'm getting more familiar with them. So I'm, they're building a trust relationship with them. So if we have a lot of small customers, that's a big risk. If we have a few big customers that put a lot of, that give us a lot of their money, then we are more safer than that because it's also more difficult to actually go away. And that goes with everything, even software engineering tools, uh, computers, customer market, but even business to business is working in exactly the same way. Now, there are two other metrics uh, that, I'm, uh, that are popping up more and more recently in the next last uh, few, few months and, and years. So customer churn in attrition. Uh, more and more companies are very much concerned about the fact of keeping their customers with the company as long as possible. So if you're developing service-oriented uh, products, you would like the customer to be happy. So that's why companies are no longer selling cars that you own for 20 years in the future and you know with all the workshops and aftermarket. The companies are selling subscription. So you buy a subscription, you, you get a new car every year. And you have to be. You should be happy as a customer. I mean, they want to to keep you as a customer happy, right? Just because they would like to have more and more customer over time, and they want you to buy more products for them. So customer churning, uh, bad will. Those are some things that are really, really uh, more and more important for the companies today. And then, of course, for the companies that are not yet there uh, when it comes to to service orientation, product or service return rate. How often do we return our product? I don't know if you know, but Amazon during the pandemic has experienced the biggest growth of their business when it comes to shipping things. But at the same time, I think they had some somewhere around 30 or 40 percent of all the goods that they ship being returned. So you can imagine how much cost that suddenly is for the company. You're shipping something, oh, it's not good enough. You have to take it back. It's really bad business, right? So this return rate becomes really, really important. It's not only cost, but it's also a bad will from the customer. If you buy something from Amazon and then it turns out to be really bad quality, you send it back. I mean, you will think twice the next time you buy it. You buy a new thing, and if you do it the same way twice, you're probably not going to go back to the company for the third time. So the product service return rate is a really important metric. Uh, 
especially for those companies who want to move into the service oriented business, who want to talk about the productivity, because this is very much related to cost and bad will of companies. Um, so before that, I will tell you, uh, I will show you a negative uh, example of a productivity improvement metric. So there are actually two. One is velocity and story point. So velocity and story point is a very appealing way of measuring productivity today, but it's also a very bad one, simply because story points are very undefined. So one story point could be very different from another story point. And I will have a nice picture in a moment on that. The second part is fragmentation and activity progress. Uh, for big companies, for, for big, uh, for big uh, projects, you would like to have everyone to tick that they are done with something over time, just to be able to, to track progress. But in reality, the bigger the company, the more ticks you do, the harder it gets to get an overview of the status. And simply because there is no single point of time where all of those ticks are actually synchronized. It's not like everybody is doing the tick now. I mean, someone is doing that on a Monday, the other person is doing that on a Tuesday, and there is another 500 people that are doing that on a Friday. So when do you have an overview of the status? The status from Friday, the tick from Friday will be very different from the tick from Monday. So looks appealing, looks great, very, very difficult to implement in practice or actually getting any decisions. Um, so. My recommendation is to wrap up uh, for a good uh, productivity metric indicator, what I've seen. So first of all, focus on your business goals. If you want to have frequency, focus on speed. If you want to have volume, focus on velocity, loading up uh, a lot of things over time. If you want to be successful, you have to focus on your goal as well. If you want to focus on your business, think about customers. If you want to focus on features and quality, think about product. If you focus on cost, focus on process and vice versa is also also um, true so if you focus on process your focus will be about cost regardless of what your management what your company when your customer says process will focus on cost because in the process there is no product if you qualify the, the right element uh, the right and you have to quantify the right element so say if you measure customers you will focus on customers if you measure customer churning, attrition, you will start asking questions. Why do these customers leave the company? Why do they abandon the service? If you measure product, you will talk about features, which features are used most frequently, which are good, which are bad ones, uh, and the process or activities. If you focus on the process, you will be talking about how many requirements review have we done this week. And, and that's of course okay if that's your goal as a company, but most probably your customers, your business are the goals that you really, really want to do. And again, the common pitfalls is, you know, if you focus on speed, you forget the products. And this picture that I took from internet illustrates this, uh, my problem with story point, right? So here you have a tricycle and skateboard and, and you have a space shuttle, which is a hundred times more, uh, worth more in the, in the uh, story points. But the question is if, if you, have a hundred developers. Will you be able to develop space shuttle in as short time as tricycle? Probably not. So story points are not really a great idea. Uh, and then, and then think about doing instead having done instead of doing. I mean, if you prioritize requirements review rather than feature development, you will have more requirements being reviewed, fewer features being developed. So. Without uh, further ado, I think I will stop here. If you have any questions, then please uh, shout out. Stop the recording.